Hello everyone of YouTube or wherever you're watching me from, probably on the other site. Nobody really watches me. I'm kind of lonely. Um, well, today I decided to make a video about something that actually I read in my class, in my English class. Um, we've been reading this book. Um, it's called Zaytoon by Dave Eggers. Eggers. You know, it's a really good book. It's non-fiction. It's, it's a true story um, based on this man, Abdul Rahman Zaytoun, real man, look him up, um, who decided it's during, you know, the whole Hurricane Katrina. He decided to stay behind while his family left. He decided to stay behind and pretty much care for their property. But as he stayed behind, um, he ended up becoming almost like um, a hero, you could say, because what he was doing, he would ride around in his canoe, that's why there's a there's a canoe in the, on the cover, that's him, it, it actually looks a lot like him, um, it has real pictures of, of him and his family, and it talks about his, his um, background, where he's from, he's a Middle Eastern man, he's from Syria, and he's a practicing Muslim, and, um, and is this book, it just, I really like it. I liked it a lot. Um, okay, so he leave, you know, at, during this whole stay in, in, in New Orleans, he's become almost like the, the, he, not the hero. He, he helps so many people when he himself is in a, in a position where he needs help also, but he, he completely forgets about himself and puts the, the lives of other people first. Um, he uh, he rides around in his canoe, and he's just assessing the damage in the city when he starts noticing that there's people who need help, and so he'll take them water, which he has in his home. He takes them water, he takes them food or whatever he has, and he even at one point encounters a room full of dogs, you know, just wild, rabid dogs, and any, any person would be afraid to enter room filled with dogs who have not eaten for days but he leaves he goes back home to where his home is at it's you know thankfully not completely underwater there's it's a two two-story house so he he had to move up uh, towards his roof so he goes home and he gets meat and stuff like that so he goes to feed these dogs every day you know and he every day that's that's his main concern the dogs they need to eat but there comes a point in the story, in the in the book, um, where he and uh, three other guys, uh, another Muslim, Nasser, Todd, um, and Ronnie, I believe was the other man's name. Uh, so him and three other men, uh, they're at the house, and these people with guns come in and say, here, come with us. Um... And they end up taking them. And they're charged, supposedly, they're charged with looting. Uh, you know, the stealing of, of property for one's own gain and not care. You know, looting during a time of crisis. But the funny thing is that Nasser, Todd, Ronnie, um, and Zaytoun, he, they're treated like very badly. They're strip searched, cavity searched, you know. That's, that's just, I think it's very degrading, a degrading, um, um, how do you say it? Like, I don't, it's very degrading for, for, if they're just being processed for, um, for looting, stealing, do you really need to stick, I mean, I'm sorry, it sounds lewd, stick a finger in their man butts? That, that's not necessary. But they come to find out that they're not really charged with just looting. They're accused of being terrorists, Al-Qaeda, Al to be exact. That's so crazy. It's so unbelievable. And this has actually happened to these men. And they're out there somewhere, you know, from what I finished reading, Zaytun still lives, and his family, Kathy, and, and, their, and their daughters, and their son, they still live in New Orleans. But, um, and it just brought to my attention something that's very true, and I want to read something. It says, um, 
this is, you know, he, they, they put him into a maximum security, security prison. They didn't let him make a phone call at all whatsoever to anybody. So his wife thinks that he's dead at this point. Um, he, he said, okay. The machinery government, uh, the machinery government of government functioned. Even if in New Orleans, this machinery was sometimes slow or poorly engineered, generally it functioned. But now nothing worked, or rather, every piece of machinery, the police, the military, the prisons, that was meant to protect people like him was devouring anyone who got close. He had long believed that the police acted in the best interest of citizens they, that they, of the best interest of the citizens that they'd served, that the military was accountable, reasonable, and was kept in check by co co concentric circles of regulations, laws, common sense, common decency. But now those hopes could be put to rest. This country was not unique. This country was fallible. Mistakes were being made. He was a mistake. In the, in the grand scheme of the, count, of the country's blind, grasping fight against the threats seen and unseen, there would be mistakes made. Innocence would be suspected. Innocence would be imprisoned. He thought of bycatch. It was a fishing term. They'd used it when he was a boy, fishing for, sar for sardines by the light of the moon they'd made. When they pulled in the net, there were thousands of sardines, of course, but there were other creatures too, life they had not intended to catch, and for which they had no use. This, I mean, just this one section, I mean, sorry, I know I stuttered a lot when I was reading this, I'm kind of sick, and I, I get lost. That... It's, I don't know, it's, I mean, and we've passed the section a while ago, um, but it just came to me, I should make a video about this and really bring to light that this is so true. It's like these four men sharing a, a house during a time of crisis were charged with looting, quote unquote, but then found to be accused of being Al-Qaeda. Nasser and uh, Zaytoun they're Muslim men from Syria. They look different. You know, they they don't look like an American, you could say. They don't look American. They they look like from where they're from. They look they look from off far away. They talk with an accent and because of that they were charged with being okay. Not charged, mind you, not being in charge. Just accused of. You know, which is, like, it's, it's better than being charged with something, but they were um, accused of being Al-Qaeda, and, and Todd and Ronnie were, were accused by association because they were in the same house. And I just find it so horrible that um, in, t in this country of opportunity, if you're not blue-eyed and blonde-haired or whatever, you're not an American. You're... A threat, you know. Um, I'm Mexican, completely, hundred percent. My parents were made in Mexico. <laughs> I was made here in the United States, but that still doesn't change the fact that I'm Mexican. I look white to a lot of people. People think I'm white, but I'm not. Um. And I would, and another thing, I'm just remembering we were reading. I was reading Malcolm X's um, bullet, Ballad of the Bullet. I believe is the, the name of the speech, and he he speaks about how. You're, you could be born in, in the U.S., you could be born in America, but you're not American. If you're not blue-eyed, you're not American. If you're from another country, you're not American. If you're not from a European country, you're not American. And I hate to agree with it, I really do, but it's things like this that happen to this man that make you really think, hey, that's kind of true. You know... I don't know, I mean, I, I don't want to say I pity this man because I don't, because what didn't kill him made him stronger, and, and thankfully there was one person out there who said, who, you know, he wasn't allowed to make a phone call, but he gave just one person his wife's number, and that person risked possibly even losing their job to get that message to his wife, that he was alive, and that he was in prison. And that's all that that's all that needed to be said. That's all he wanted to, to do to get that message to his wife. I'm alive and I'm here. But even then, they gave her the runaround. 
um, they told her that he, they, she had to appear in court for him. And she was like, great, okay, I'll appear in court. But they forgot to tell her where this court would be held, and it was in the Hunt prison. But they never told her that. And so when she called back to try and get, you know, get that information, it's confidential. It's private information, you know. And she just went crazy. And, and Kathy and um, Abdul Rahman, I don't know, you probably guess, I don't know if you guys even do YouTube. Um, I, I can just say I'm sorry for the ordeal you guys had to go through. I mean, and I know this is just one story, and I know that there's maybe more, but this is a story that you guys spoke up about. And, and you guys spoke up, and, and you, there's a book that's going to teach, you know, thousands of people if they pick this book up and read it, which I highly recommend. But it's, Kathy, I'm, I'm, you know, you went through so much for your husband. You fought for him, and there are so many people who are suffering right now. Innocent people suffering just like your husband did, and they have no one to fight for them. But you, you took... You took matters into your hands and you got your husband out. And my, I don't know, just, I'm, I just, can, I can just say thank you for being the strongest woman I think that has walked the face of the earth so far. I mean, I know there's other strong women, but right now, after reading this, you are by far the strongest. And Zay Tuni, you're one of the strongest men. And thank you for helping all those people. And I'm sorry about the dogs. They ended up. Uh, people they ended up um, dying because he was put away. Um, but you, you, your family did so much for other people, and just please, if there's another hurricane, Satan, don't stay behind. <laughs> you know, you did great. You know, a great job of helping people, but your family comes first, and I know you know that. And I know that, you know, you're, you're a practicing, you know, Muslim. And I know that, you know, you, that's your religion. Religion also comes first, right up there with your family. But keep yourself safe in order to keep your family safe. And thank you for being the man that you are. The brave man. The, a brave man. And saying, I'm staying behind for these people and for these animals. First of all, the animals? <laughs> um... But I recommend this. If anybody's even watched this long, because it's only it's 12 minutes long. Oh god, I recommend this book. I suggest you go out, buy it, um, read it in the bookstore, uh, take it out of a library if it's available. It's called Zaytoon by Dave Eggers. Dave Eggers, and this man, he did a great job, and it's just amazing how it's true. And you, it, it, with the United States. Um, what happened? What happened to him? To catch one um, terrorist, they take in innocent people. Like in, the, in his story, when he was younger, and they would fish for sardines, but they would catch other things that they had no use for. They had no use for Zaytun, and they kept them there. And gladly and thankfully, he and the rest of the, the men got out. But. It's just amazing that that's what, how the U.S. works. So go get the book and read it. It's it's hard to read. I'm not going to lie. It's very hard to read from you know beginning to end because sometimes you're like, oh, but believe me, it's worth reading. See ya and sorry for such a long video. You guys probably skipped to the end.